What is up guys and welcome back to another raid challenge video with me the real deal so today we are going to be looking at the final reward in the missions and that is romantu um he is an awesome awesome champion um so good there are a few roadblocks in getting him though you do need to be able to get into gold for tag team arena but if you played the game for about two years it's free to play um, as long as you've pulled the right champions and you've got the gear you should be easily able to get into gold for Tag Team Arena. Um, but yeah, Romantu, definitely worth putting in work to get him. Um, really unique skill set, but great champion. Um, so there's two ways that you can build him. You can either go Nuka or four support. If you go Nuka, you're going to want sort of three champions around him, three supportive champions to keep him alive so he can do his thing. Um, but it's quite difficult because if you build him as a new car, he's going to be very stat hungry. Um, you need lots of accuracy. You need him to be really, really fast. Um, crit rate needs to be 100. And then you need attack as well. And then you need as much crit damage too, so you can do loads of damage. And that's really, really hard to do. So I would probably say it's better to go support. But if you do go new car, you're going to want him in savage gear and um, either instinct. And then probably with perception, just so you can get that accuracy and speed. But yeah, instinct, savage, that would be the way to go. Um, but if you're going to build him support, support, you're probably going to want um, either triple perception, maybe perception and speed, or um, what else is there? Um, immunity set would be good on him. That's another way to go uh, to build him. But yeah, ideally, you just want him to be really fast with loads of accuracy. So let's look at um, how I built him. So Substats we're looking for are speed and accuracy, speed and accuracy, and more speed. So these are attack percentage gloves. So what I would say is ideally you'd want HP gloves. Then if you don't have HP, um, then defense, then crit rate, and then attack percentage. So the reason I had to go for attack percentage is basically because of the substat roles, which are the speed and accuracy. So normally I wouldn't do this unless it was a bomb champion. But sometimes, you know, that's the way things are. I don't have really good HP percentage um, perception gloves, so I've had to go with these attack ones. But the substats are amazing, so it definitely makes up for it. And then you're like, why has he got, um, you know, stone skin as the chest? It's just, again, it's just these substats of 23 speed and 96 uh, accuracy. I can't pass that up. Just too good. So, yeah, it's a broken set. Uh, and then we've got speed on the boots with accuracy substat roll. And as you can see, I've not fully rolled up my, um, so I've not fully glyphed my gear yet either. Um, so I can definitely bump my stats up more. Then we've got HP on the ring for survivability, um, crit damage on the amulet. And I would have preferred a defensive one like HP or defense. But it's just because I had that triple roll on accuracy, that's why I went with this. And then again, we've got accuracy on the banner and double speed rolled definitely would like that to be higher but that's the best i've got unfortunately so we've got 44k hp we got 3.9k attack 280 speed um, and then 636 accuracy so speed and accuracy are definitely the most important thing on him um sort of i'd say sort of 250 above for speed and then minimum for accuracy probably like sort of 400 for arena but you definitely want to sort of push up to sort of 600, 700 when you're, you know, going higher up. So let's have a look at his skills and uh, his passive. So passive, whenever an enemy places stun, sleep, fear, freeze, true fear, or provoke debuff on this champion, will instantly fill this champion's term by 30, place a 30% increased speed buff and a shield buff for two turns. The shield buff is equal to 30% of this champion's max HP. That in itself is a really nice passive. Um, but the problem with that is, though, it means you'll be faster, but you need someone to be faster than him just to cleanse that. Because otherwise, you know, he'll still miss a turn if he's provoked, freezed, etc. So his A3 is what I really like on him, and it's such a good ability. Um, so basically, it's a strip. So he is a stripper, um, attacks all enemies, has a 100% when fully booked. Chance of removing all buffs from the enemy before attacking. Um, also has a 100% ch 
chance of facing block active skills for two turns. Um, and then also has 80% chance of facing block passive skills debuff for two turns on enemies with passive skills. So really, really strong ability. Um, I don't think there are any other champions in the game at the moment that can do block, uh, block passive skills. If I am wrong, please correct me in the comments below. But I'm pretty sure he's the only champion in the game that has this. And why is that such a strong ability? Well, because there are so many champions in the game that rely on their passives. So let's just have a look at some of them. So a really good one is Duchess. So her passive reduces the damage from all enemies by 25% AoE damage. So you know your Trunda comes in and it's going to reduce her damage by 25% to the whole team. That is so strong. And there's like a really um, sort of common team that you see in like Plat and high tag team arena. And that is Duchess played up with uh, this Barbarian, uh, Usaga. And basically you can stack their passive. So she decreases the damage all uh, allies receive from critical hits by 30%. And this champion will see that damage instead as well. So you got Duchess reducing the AoE damage by 25%. And then Usaga is going to absorb 30% of the critical hit damage as well. It just it mitigates so much damage. But if you've got Roman to, he will just basically, you know, make both, you know, that sort of strategy just completely useless. And you can just come in with your nukas and still get work done. So another strong combo would be Sifi and Rotos that used to be really popular back in the day. Not as strong as it used to be, but still a very strong uh, combo. So basically, um, Sifi's passive, uh, when paired up with Rotos, removes all debuffs from Rotos, the Lost Groom, at the start of his turn. If they're on the same team that is just massive so basically that can be really annoying but you know you throw this out and it just stops them from being able to do that and then also rotos is passive um will decrease damage from enemy hits so that incoming damage hits from a single hit will not exceed 50 percent of this enemy's max hp that is just insane and basically by using this you just completely make them both uses and you can just drop rotos easily and you stop him being able to, you know, he sort of becomes unseat. You can't crowd control him because of Sifi, and this just completely stops that. So yeah, it is really, really strong. So back to Roman two. Then he's got a really nasty A two as well. Attacks one enemy four times. The first hit has a twenty five percent chance of placing decreased defense for two turns when fully booked. Um, also has a hundred percent chance of placing weaken. The third hit has a hundred percent chance when fully booked placing decrease speed and then the fourth hit places block buffs and then also has a hundred percent chance of placing true fear debuff on all enemies for one turn if the target has four or more debuffs after the attack so this is really really strong um, personally though i would say i always want him to open with his a3 so if anyone has stone skin or immunity you're going to strip that from them and then you're going to place block active skills and block passive skills and then you can just let your nukas run riot um, and then attacks one enemy that has a 100% yeah, chance of increasing the cooldown of one of the target skill at random by one turn. Has a hundred, uh, sorry, and then has a 25%, so 25. Uh, quick maths, 50% chance of placing stun on the target as well. So this is really, really annoying. Um, and then if the cooldown increases, increase is successful, will decrease the cooldown of one skill of a random ally by one turn with the, oh, sorry, sorry. The ally with the highest term ER will have a skill reduced by one turn that's on cooldown. Really, really nice A1. So blessings. Um, there's a few different ways you can go with him. If you've got a team that's going to put loads of buffs on him, then you can go Lightning Cage. Um, I would probably go Temporal Chains just because it's probably has the best chance of, you know, it's going to slow down the other teams. So that means you're going to get your chance to go and be able to throw out, you know, that block passive, strip buffs. So personally, I think Trump, uh, Temporal Chains would be the best option. But if you are going to build them as a new cut, then Soul Reap is also still, you know, that will be your number one option if you're going to go in Nuke. Um, and you can still go Polymorph as well. Polymorph is still a really annoying thing to deal with. But um, yeah, it's, it's a toss up, I'd say, between Polymorph and Temporal Chains. But I personally would go with Temporal Chains because if you're using him on offense, then if you've got Polymorph, that's going to slow down you being able to take out the other team. 
So yeah, personally, in fact, let's just do it now. Let's take temporal chains. So masteries, um, we've gone offense and support. Um, you could also go support and def defense, or if you're going nuke, then you'd want to go offense and support. Um, so we've gone for accuracy, leading into more accuracy. With some more accuracy. And then Laura Steel, just to increase our stat bonuses. Uh, Master Hexa, just to help increase the duration of our debuffs. And then we want Eagle Eye for that extra accuracy. Um, it's probably worth taking Eagle Eye over Helm Smasher if you are going to build him as a full nuke, just because you do want him to land those debuffs. Um, so then, because we want him to do a bit of damage for us, we've got Crit Rate, Shield Breaker. Um, ruthless ambush so we increase our damage for the first hit by eight percent then opportunist so there is a good chance that we are going to be pairing them up with something that's going to throw out sleep or fear or stuns or true fear and we do throw out true fear ourselves as well so that's going to increase our damage by 12 percent as well um so then we've got some crit damage in there and single out is going to increase the damage inflicted targets with less than 40 percent hp by eight percent bring it down so if you do have him built as full nuker, this is definitely what you're going to be taking because it's going to increase your damage to the champions that have more HP than you. Um, and then we've gone for kill streaks. So that's going to increase our damage when we're taking out people. Um, and then methodical is going to increase the damage that AE1 does, and it sort of builds up over time. So we've looked at his gear, we've looked at his mastery, we've looked at his skills. Let's take him into the arena. Okay, here we go. So we've got Liores, Baron, Trunda, and Cardinal. So we've got some really strong champs here. Um, I'm guessing that Cardinal is going to be able to cleanse, though. He probably will be in immunity set. But let's just see what happens. But what we can do is we can block Liores from being able to um, throw any buffs out. So hopefully we're going to strip that immunity. And we have, and we've blocked his passive as well. And we've blocked um, Liores' passive as well. So he's not going to become unkillable. And there we go. And we've just dropped their team. And, you know, that's what I was saying. Like, you know, I knew that that Cardinal was more than likely is going to be an immunity set. And we've managed to strip that. And then we've stopped him from being able to use his passive and cleansing the team. And then we stopped Liores from being able to, you know, keep that unkillable buff on himself and then turn around and just smack our team. Uh, so let's, uh, let's see if we can get some more fights. So I just found this redonkulous team. Um, we've got Arbiter, Tormund, Necrid, and Gearoid. Like, those two right there are two of the strongest champions in the game by far. Um, so I'm going to see if I can try and take them out with my team comp. I've brought in some of my big boys. Um, so fingers crossed we can smash this. Um, but there's a good chance that we might not be able to win if Romantu gets frozen. And he did. That's going to cause some issues. Um, let's cleanse. So we're going to cleanse. And let's see if we can try and strip down their team. Okay, so they propped our passive. Oh, Hefreg doing some work there. I mean, that's a bit annoying because it's not meant to be a showcase of Hefreg. It's meant to be Romantu. Um, but yeah. And yeah, let's just drop them. Yeah, so that wasn't really showcasing Romantu right there. Um, let's, let's find another one. I am sorry, guys. That last clip was just me flexing. Um, but yeah, so we got... Um, Ultimate Death Knight here, who is a real pain in the backside. And I'm going to show you how we can easily counter that. So we're going to boost our speed. And then we're going to strip with Romantu. So, you know, who do I want to focus down? I want to take out, um, I, I'd actually, um, is it Hamred? Hemorrhoids or something? I don't know. But um, yeah, let's just cleanse. So we're going to take her out first. And see, normally... Ultimate Death Knight were taking that as hits because we're single target. Um, but he didn't because we had that passive. So now I want to take out. Uh, well, yeah, let's take out Ultimate Death Knight. And then we'll go back to. Um, oh, traffic, what is her name? It's her, Hermione. Hermione. You know who I'm talking about. This chick here. Yeah, we'll take her out in a minute. And I think I'm just gonna save save my A2. And then we'll take out um uh, Rector Draft. Sorry, I'm forgetting everything today. Yeah, so take out Rector Draft next. 
And I think we'll just whack it on full auto. And we'll take out Hermione. But yeah, that is the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helps you guys uh, with building your Romantu. He is still a real strong champion, and I actually think he is going to be really strong in live arena. I'm definitely going to bring him in because most champions, the really, really strong champions, the reason they're strong is because of their passive. But yeah, definitely still a goat, and definitely do invest in him. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe, and I'll catch you in my next video. Peace.